A little side project on this motorcycle build turned out to be the brake rotors. They're nicely molded parts and per the kit instructions simply require a little bit of detail painting before gluing to the wheel. Like many injection molded parts, the kit's brake rotors have ejector pin marks on them. These are located on the back side, so they're not overly visible on the finished model, but they're easy enough to fill by punching discs out of 20,000 styrene sheet, gluing them in place with solvent cement, and letting the cement cure thoroughly, and then sanding them down flush with the surface of the brake rotor. By using a disc that closely matched the size of the ejector pin mark, and gluing them in place with solvent cement, no putty was required for a clean smooth finish. On the front surface of the brake rotor, I decided to represent the bolt heads holding it to the wheel. The real bike has six fasteners, on the model I went with five, because the brake rotor has ten spokes, making it easy to locate each bolt head between a pair of spokes to keep them evenly spaced. A short piece of 732 diameter styrene tube was cut and used as a spacer to locate the center punch marks and keep the bolt circle consistent all the way around. Holes were drilled 20 thou diameter and styrene rivet head castings glued in place. These aren't 100% accurate to the fasteners on the real bike, but on the model they create an effective illusion of fasteners holding the brake disc to the wheel. Excess length projecting off the back side can be trimmed off once the glue is cured thoroughly, and then sand it smooth, being careful to preserve the two mounting lugs that locate the brake rotor to the wheel. The front surface of the kit's brake rotors have nicely molded in grooves, but the back side is completely smooth. An optional detail that can be added is some texture scored into the surface. Not having a lathe in the tool collection, I had to use a lower tech expedient in the form of this Dremel tool sanding attachment. Remove the sanding drum and the washers and cut a small piece of 1 8th aluminum tube, approximately 50 thousandths of an inch long, to use as a spacer. Enlarge the hole slightly in the center of the brake rotor using a 332 diameter drill, and attach the brake rotor to the sanding drum shaft with the smooth side facing out. With the motor tool running at low speed, a razor saw can be used to score grooves into this side of the brake rotor. These grooves won't be as perfect as the molded in ones on the front face of the brake rotor, but this little bit of added texture on the back side of the part is a subtle detail that's easy to add. Thanks for watching part 3. I'm not sure at this point what part 4 is going to feature, whether it be frame, wheels, or some other components, so stay tuned and I'll post an update in the near future.